This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. And welcome, everybody, to episode 8 of the Animaniacast. The Candyman smile, I look and you can tell that this nice man wears a toupee. Please don't mind what I will now say. I think that you should wear a beret. We are a podcast dedicated to the animated television series Animaniacs. Each and every episode, we talk about a different episode of Animaniacs in the order in which they were released. And we talk about all the different gags and the jokes and all the different cultural references. And we go on tangents from time to time. And we share our memories of first seeing the episode and what we think of the episode right now. And in the end, we give each and every episode a water tower rating. I am Joey, and with me here in hot Arizona is Nathan. I'm sweating. <laughs> and in stormy Georgia, it's Kelly. Hello. And today we are going to be talking about episode 8 of The Animaniacs, which premiered on September 22nd, 1993. A lot of cool things in this episode. First of all, how are you guys doing today? I'm doing well. I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. There's thunder rumbling right outside my window, so hopefully it won't uh, pick up on the podcast too much with the audio. But um, other than that, things are great. That's good. It just adds more atmosphere to the, yeah. you know, to the thing. It's it's moody. It's, yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you can sleep to it now. So. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, in case we didn't, you know, we didn't put you to sleep normally, here's, here's some additional <laughs> stuff to put you to sleep. Uh, so we have uh, a very, very nice episode this, uh, this time around uh, with some smaller segments mm -hmm. and uh let's go ahead and get right into it um first of all the episode starts off uh with a different opening so it's not yeah it's the not, newsreel of the stars no, newsreels the stars not there that's great exactly this is good stuff for nathan <laughs> it starts off with a parody of the gilligan's island song and it's just called the warner's lot song and it's roughly the tune of the gilligan's islands mm -hmm. uh tune <laughs> Just sit right back and you'll hear a tale, a tale of a fateful trip That started from this tropic port aboard this tiny ship Just listen up and you'll hear a tale, a tale of the Warner Three When on the water tower they did try to flee The thing in, at, the, at the end, uh, it basically just talks about how the Warners shot rain seeds into the sky once and the rain came down and L.A. flooded and the, the Warner Tower broke off and they landed in the Burbank lot, which it seems like they floated all around L.A. and then ended right back in. Right where they started. Right yeah. where they started. It's so, kind of weird. <laughs> but um, I'm sure that these rain seeds actually, we need to get the Animaniacs down to California immediately because they've been having this drought <laughs> for yeah. the longest time. It's because the Animaniacs stopped oh, not on the air anymore. Bring it's... back the Animaniacs. Bring back the rain. <laughs> <laughs> See what happens. See what happens when you cancel the Animaniacs Kids WB. Not only do you go off the air, but then <laughs> the rain goes. The off rain the goes air. off the air. <laughs> yes. Good. So bring back the Animaniacs, and we will bring back rain seeds. A promise from the Animani cast. I'm not. That's not me. I'm not. <laughs> we'll, we'll work that. on it. We'll okay. work on it. <laughs> but um, yeah, basically, it's you know, it's it's a, it's a cute little uh thing right there. It shows at the very end. Probably the highlight for me is showing uh you know Doctor Scratch and Sniff and Hello Nurse and the CEO Ralph the Guard and it says some movie stars and it shows Clint Eastwood, Meryl Streep, Cher, and Jack Nicholson. And then it shows the professor and Marianne, yeah, like, like it that. did in the Gilligan's Island theme. And the Animaniacs just have this, or I'm sorry, I, I keep calling them the Animaniacs. Just say, and the Warners, yeah, uh, the Warners just look kind of uh, confused at why the, mm -hmm. the why they're up there. Uh, just a quick side note that this is apparently the first time that uh, Hello Nurse is called Hello Nurse, other than by 
Well, by the enemy, yeah. by, the, by the Warner Brothers, yes. Uh, always call her Hello Nurse. But um, yes, this is the first kind of official time where she was called Hello Nurse, whereas before, like Dr. Scratch and Sniff is calling her Miss Nurse and everything like mm-hmm. that. So yeah. uh, there you go. Her Officially, she's Hello Nurse. Um, so what do you guys, what's your uh, thoughts about this first little uh, opening, uh, either on this or perhaps on Gilligan's Island in general? Do you guys have any memories of well, I never watched Gilligan's Island, but I enjoyed this opening. That's <laughs> <laughs> as much as I mean. I've seen some references to Gilligan's Island, of course, but you can still find it on reruns, like on yeah. You know, if but you... like, do I want to? I don't think you do, but you... <laughs> I don't know. I, I hear it's good and all, but I'm pretty sure there's better things out there too. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of the one I want to say one joke thing, but um, there's there's multiple things. They they make they make a lot of different things out of coconuts, mm-hmm. which is cool to see. It's Bob Denver, I believe his name is Bob Denver, who was playing Gilligan, who is also Maynard G. Krebs on uh, 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 Dobie Gillis. Okay, so there you go. So I know him from a couple different things. Again, Gilligan's Island was shown much more, I think, in the eighties. And then and into the 90s than today, definitely, because I I mean, I was flipping channels on the because we got an antenna, we cut cable. And so I got one of the (laughs) one of the new antennas and it still plays. I watched about five minutes of Gilligan's Island a couple of weeks ago and said, "Okay, that's Gilligan's Island and moving on. Got your amount that you need for the year. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That was about it. <laughs> Kelly, any any thoughts on this segment or on perhaps any memories of Gilligan's Island? Did you ever watch that show? I I did. Um, it came on one of the channels. It showed a lot of older shows and, uh, you know, along with like Love Boat and The Addams Family and The Munsters and just a whole, whole bunch of um, older TV shows. And I, I think I liked it okay. It's never one that I really got too terribly in, involved in, but I always thought it was kind of cool with the, the straw huts or, you know, thatched huts or whatever whatever yeah. they were made out of and um and yeah the coconuts and uh the the different characters you know you had the professor he was the smart guy always coming up with ideas and gilligan was the the bumbling you know uh first mate who's always getting into trouble yeah. and, i think they almost then, got off the island a bunch of different times but then gilligan <laughs> ruined it at the very end he was the pinky pretty much <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> and then um I uh, always thought that uh, Ginger's dresses were really cool, even though they were very unsuited to island life. Yes. She always had a new one, though, which was interesting. It uh, was amazing. She brought, like, her whole wardrobe. Now, you mentioned the Munsters. Were, were you more of a fan of the Munsters or Adam's family? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I'm going to say the Adam's family. Yes. yes I see. love the Adam's family. <laughs> and I'm much more Munsters myself. I just, yeah. I just, I, I love the dad in the monsters. Mm. But anyway, it was cool, yeah. But I, no, I loved cousin it, and I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I think I wanted to be Wednesday Adams or something. And, <laughs> and Gomez was just awesome. I they sore fight. And... I love the movies. The movies yeah, were great. They were great too. <laughs> the second one better than the first one. Yeah. But... Anyway. <laughs> That's just my opinion. Christopher Lloyd, though. Now, so when it good. comes to... Yes, Christopher oh, yes. Lloyd was amazing. And the second one, especially. Yeah. Um, but uh, when it comes to Gilligan's Island, Kelly, are you a Ginger, the movie star, or are you a Marianne? Mm. Um, this is a, these are important questions. I, I guess if I'm... I'm probably more like Marianne. Yeah. I, yeah. Think, most, I think most real women are closer to Marianne. Although personally, growing up as a kid, I liked the movie star more because I just thought she was pretty. But I, I know she was like not the one you were suppo- like supposed to like because she was spoiled, and I could use a different word. But uh, she, she was, she was, she was the one I liked more because she was pretty. Or, she just wore pretty clothes opinion. that you wanted. No, not that. No, <laughs> no. So anyway, enough of that on that on that note. But anyway, let's go ahead and move right into the theme song, which once again. Says, uh, here's the show's namey. Here's the show's namey. Yep. Again, for the variable verse. This is the fourth time this has happened. Out of eight episodes. Out of eight episodes. Still 50-50 then. Or, well, 50-50. Yes, exactly. We're, yeah. we're... Whatever. <laughs> but I, that was kind of like, oh, come so on. So by the end, there'll probably be 
two i don't know we'll, yeah we'll, we'll we'll have a good count by the end Everyone yeah will know. and then it's just skipping ahead real quick to the end again was goodbye nurse at the end so, yeah which is again it's just so like... the if if it so luckily the newsreel of the stars wasn't at the beginning yes if, otherwise if it was I got like one star if i would have totally i would have been angry too because i would have been like the whole beginning and end was the same uh <laughs> but luckily it was a little different there with the gilligan's island the yeah. warner's lot song you know how spoiled we sound we i do just, well, like there's one little thing that's you know more not, content not different in this one episode but Let's remember that there are some t- uh, cartoons that never changed or had varying. Lyrics. Exactly, and yeah. and 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 that's the other thing too is that <laughs> this was a this was a show that was put out every day. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is a daily show. This was not a once a week watch the Animaniacs. It was Monday, mm. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, I skipped Wednesday, I think. Monday through Friday <laughs> show. Uh, so they had to they had they had to cut some you know, corners here and there just to make sure they could get it all out in time. Uh, but anyway, we start off with a couple, uh, there's a couple little speaking of new segments mm-hmm. that we introduce a new segment in this particular episode, who is, he's typically known as the Randy Beeman kid, uh, AKA Colin. Colin. Uh, mm-hmm. he's, he's known as Colin in the, uh, in the credits is he was voiced by a kid named Colin Wells. So there you go. <laughs> That's why his, probably his name was Colin and not Randy Beeman kid <laughs> in the credits. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, so there's two different uh, Randy Beeman uh, kid segments in this. The first one is where he comes out and he talks about one time his mom uh, was dreaming about eating a marshmallow and then she woke up and her pillow was gone. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then and that was kind of like nice because, oh, yeah, you get to hear a joke i heard i remember liking that joke when i was a little kid so i'm sure that joke made some kids laugh a lot back then yeah. uh the other one i kind of thought was interesting which was randy you're talking about uh randy beeman's aunt because see one time randy beeman's aunt was sitting on the on the front porch and she and she was in her bare feet and she felt a lick and she thought it was her dog licking her feet but it wasn't it was this crazy guy that did that a lot and then his ice cream falls and then his ice cream <laughs> fell and he ran back inside that's um, that's a lot of creepiness in a kid's cartoon. Right yeah, there. That's, that's, that's creep factor. It really was. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I liked it because of just how weird that was. Mm-hmm. Uh, as I listen to it now, I because I totally forgot about it as a kid. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think about the Randy Beeman kid, aka Colin? Uh, I like the music too. I don't know, like how it syncs up with uh, his blinking eyes and mm-hmm. just. And, when his little feet go, yeah, da, 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 like, da, 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 da. I just like him running out and then running back away too. Just like, okay, bye. Just, <laughs> yeah. Just, Kelly, I, I love the randomness of it. You just never know what the kid's going to say. And he's always got an interesting story. Yeah. I, I To me, he, he really reminds me, and I have no idea if this is inspired or if this is just coincidental, but I was also a fan um, in middle school watching... Uh, the Kids in the Hall, which they would show those episodes on Comedy Central at the time. And there's this girl in it called the, I think, well, her her name was just the It's a Fact Girl. It was this girl who was approximately like a real girl, not one of the kids in the hall dressed up in drag like they oh, usually okay. did. But it was this girl who would come out and say, it's a fact. And she would say a random weird fact and then run away into the distance um, in fact, here's a clip right here. Want to hear something? It's a fact. Super intelligent life forms visit the Earth regularly to brag. You're aware, of course, that we're super intelligent, aren't you? I mean, look at our big foreheads. You know why they're so big? Because we have big brains. And we have super intelligence. <laughs> There's a clip of the the it's a fat girl. <laughs> I liked it, <laughs> but it was it was one of those things that I remember making a connection immediately as a as a you know a kid going wait a minute is this like this is like the it's a fact girl except it's a cartoon little boy. Um, I have no idea if if it's inspirational. I have the feeling it's just coincidental. Yeah, I mean it's ideas come from everywhere. You know? Yeah, <laughs> there's dragons all around the world. Um, anyway. 
So yes, so Randy Beeman, aka Colin, a cute little thing. We'll see. We'll see lots more of him in the future. The two big episodes, the two big segments, I should say, in this particular episode, are the big candy store and then Bumby's mom. Nathan, why don't you go ahead and give us a quick synopsis of the big candy store, which, let me just say, was a story by Sherry Stoner and Paul Rugg. It was written by Paul Rugg and then directed by John McClanahan. Because I had to make sure to do an Irish accent for that. Well, he is Irish. Yes. So, Well, there's an Irish nun it's in this, very too. very Irish. There's yeah. a very Irish-centered yeah. uh, in this cartoon. So, John McClanahan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the uh, big candy store uh, is about the Warners trying to get free candy from the Flaxseed so- store. And Mr. Flaxseed, I guess, right, is his name? Yes. I think his his first name is Furman, actually. Furman Flaxseed. He's like one of the first non-human villains, I feel like. I don't remember. Uh... Yeah. All right. Well, anyways, he, he does not want to give the Warners free candy, but they end up causing a muck, and uh, at the end, he gets beat up by the Notre Dame football team. The Notre Lame football oh, team. Oh, well... I'm going to say Notre Dame because <laughs> I don't want to get beat up by the Notre Dame football team. But myself. they're called Notre Dame. They're called actually, on the bus. It says Notre Lame. Yeah, but I don't want to get beat up. You don't want to call Notre. Oh, my I'm... gosh. Oh, God. Oh, no. ah! <laughs> also. Uh, at the very end, he becomes a chocolate rabbit where all the orphans eat him alive. It's hilarious. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Wait. Yes, they get to the creamy center. This is a disturbing episode. It really <laughs> is. We have people being feet lit. Yeah, basically and... the Warners are stealing candy and then they eat. Uh, well, I guess he's not a human, so it's okay. Somebody should recut this episode as a horror movie. Like, I don't know if y'all seen the, the, the Mary Poppins trailer. Yes. Something like that. This would be. This would lend itself I to that. I agree. Very well. You just change the music on this, and all of a sudden, it it could become very sick and twisted. Uh, so, what are your what are your general thoughts and uh, about this first segment here uh, before we get into all the different references and trivia that we have, Kelly? What do you like about the big candy store? Anything you like at all? I just think it's a fun episode. They are really annoying flaxseed <laughs> and when they asked to look at the jelly beans and he climbs up and there's an astronaut and um it, it just keeps the ladder keeps going up and up and up and and he finally brings it down he's like oh we don't want any we we don't have any money but we just wanted to see him yeah we just want to look at it <laughs> and they put their eyeballs right against the jar mm-hmm. i think that's and- his fault basically too that <laughs> putting the jelly beans way up there like he did that <laughs> somebody did maybe he bought well, the store from somebody else yeah i guess <laughs> maybe <laughs> Um, but yes, all the, also the, uh, the, they were, you were talking about him, them really annoying him. They were especially annoying. Like, this is us making fun of you. I sell candy. <laughs> and they were really. Right. So you're making fun of me. We aren't making fun of you. This is making fun of you. We sell candy. We sell candy. See the difference. <laughs> they were really going out of their way to be truly annoying the most annoying as possible in this this particular one mm-hmm. uh nathan what about you what did you like about it like the candy store the candy man song at the oh, very yeah, beginning the candy like man parody right uh right out of uh willy wonka and the chocolate factory or... <laughs> yes where they tell him instead of where wacko who sounds a little deeper than usual mm. uh he tells him instead of wearing a toupee he should wear a beret uh which is kind of a cute little joke right there uh they did i on second time watching this episode uh, i really did notice yeah they're really they're really you know making fun of his toupee quite a bit as a <laughs> uh, which is weird he has hair on the top of his head when they take true. off his toupee he has hair there. he is he has fur on yeah. his head he's fur all over why does he have to have weird. To something to think about? Oh boy, that is weird. Okay, <laughs> so anyway, uh, yes, a very it was a, a cute little you know little segment here, and actually there's quite a bit of 
uh, stuff in the background. Really, the the majority of the of the references and gags and everything were actually the signs in the beginning of this uh, segment. We had lots of stuff uh, that I was pausing uh, Netflix, pause, 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 pause to like see all the different things that were written up on the signs of this town that they were in. Uh, so we have a lot of different background stories, starting off with Bert's World of Cheese, which says, yes, we cut the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tammy's Galaxy of Yarn, uh, who apparently is a, that is apparently a reference to one of the animators of the show, uh, Tammy, Tammy Daniel Blake, or I'm sorry, not, uh, it's, uh, Tammy Daniel Bisque. Yes. Uh, and, uh, then there's, we have soupy universe of galvanized drywall screws. Uh, we have, uh, of course, flaxseed shop, which is not called the candy shop. It's called flaxseeds totality of candy. Hmm. Um, there's uh, another place that's called Karen Christ Wholesale, Wholesale Frames. Now, that's kind of a weird one because you could read the name Karen Christ, and I can't figure out who Karen Christ is. There was a She was a, a production super or assistant for a show in the 1980s. As far as I can tell, no uh, obvious connection to the Animaniacs. So, but maybe one of the background designers just knew this woman hmm. uh, or a woman named Karen Christ and put her into the show. So there you go. That's a in joke for that person. <laughs> so they, Hilarious. they know they're in the show. Uh, there's another one called Doorknob Heaven. <laughs> and they're very specialized stores in this town. <laughs> we, yeah. have, we have dry. We have a whole store that's nothing but cheese, nothing but drywall screws, and then nothing but doorknobs. I think that's kind of cool. Uh, and then we have the Lisa Ann Warren Music Company. Uh, who and Lisa Ann Warren actually did work for the Animaniacs as a production supervisor. So there you go. There's a lot of little stuff in the background. Um, I kind of thought that Furman Flaxseed was actually John Cleese. Yeah, I thought so too. I was like, oh, is that John Cleese? Yeah, like I was thinking that they, that's really a coup to get John Cleese, especially back then, because John Cleese wasn't really doing uh, that much animation voiceover work. Now he's done like the Shrek movies and... Uh, a bunch of different things like that, but mm -hmm. uh, it was not John Cleese. No. <laughs> it was a guy doing a very, very good John Cleese impression. Uh, Jeff Bennett, uh, who is the voice actor for that. And uh, Jeff Bennett is, uh, for me, uh, best known as doing the voice of Johnny Bravo. Uh, so some some range oh. in that man's <laughs> voice acting right there. And he's also did uh, uh, Smee. He does a really great Smee on uh, uh, Jake and the Neverland Pirates. Uh, if you want to watch your favorite show, <laughs> <laughs> he has a good Smee voice. No, I, right. I know that. I know that. I just uh, there's a there's a cool documentary which, uh, as of our record date, <laughs> is on Netflix called "I Know That Voice," and it's just mm. a, it's a great documentary that shows like how voice actors do their job. And uh, Jeff Bennett's actually one of the actors in that, showing yeah, how he does Smee's voice. It has Billy West in it too? Is oh yeah, right? Billy okay. West. I heard he um. There's little, there's quick little references uh, to, um, like, Yakko says he wants to get rid of pestilence. He says pestilence a couple times, that he wants to get rid of pestilence. But he also says he wants to put a Chevrolet in every driveway, which I don't know if that's great product placement right there for yeah. the Chevrolet company. All these kids are going to go out and buy Chevrolets. <laughs> Wait, well. Yeah. Um, but the that's kind of a sort of a, a reference to the old... Uh, Herbert Hoover campaign who promised a chicken in every pot in an automobile in every garage was that, mm -hmm. that campaign promise. If you know anything about history, uh, Herbert Hoover did not come through with those promises unless you consider living in a cardboard shack, uh, a great thing. Uh, <laughs> Herbert Hoover, not one of our best, pres best presidents when it comes to uh, economic policies. Um, and of course we mentioned Notre Dame. I'm sorry, <clears throat> Notre Dame. There you go. Uh, it comes See, at the very end. It just makes it sound like you really hate Notre Dame. <laughs> <laughs> so, so those are our, our quick little things right there. Um, it, it, again, uh, uh, overall, a pretty straightforward episode. It has a lot of uh, cool little running around. Um, what are some any any other particular moments that you that you liked in this? I liked when the football team came in. Um, <laughs> 
the Notre Dame, Notre Dame. Whatever. Yes, that and, the um, nuns had to the nuns had to pray <laughs> like mm-hmm. the, they they pray because they could not be violent, but they could right. pray they could pray for their Catholic uh, college football players to come and destroy him instead. So yeah, I funny. just love the way they piled out of the the bus and you know just stomped right through the front door and uh, tackled Flexi. <laughs> and Dot was it? Dot starts. <laughs> Dot says that they want Flaxseed to win or something like that. Yeah, and just kidding. Just kidding. No, Flaxseed! Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> there's some cute little uh, running gags, such as like Dot um, calling him kid a couple times. He's mm-hmm. like, I'm not a kid. My uh, good man. Yes. I'm not your good man. <laughs> We're running out of options here. <laughs> so, yes, again... It, it was cute. Um, it's actually based upon the. Uh, it's it's been theorized, okay, uh, that the at least the title, the big candy store, is based off of the Marx Brothers film, The Big Store. So guess what I decided to do? Uh, watch the big store. Watch the big okay. store. <laughs> and I I went to I went to our bookstore and I I bought a used copy. And I said, okay, I'm going to watch this and see if there's any similarities at all to what we just watched at the big candy store. And you know what? There were no similarities oh. whatsoever. The only... Well, <laughs> the, well, the Animaniacs are actually very similar to the Well, Marks, I guess that's we true. We talked about that two weeks ago. Yes, but. that's true. I mean, <laughs> you want to talk about the Animaniacs being similar to the Mark? I guess that's the similarity. Um, I, the only similarity, if I guess, if I were to really grasping at straws would be flaxseeds um shelves you know how they have like random like candy and heads and dolls and things like that okay are very similar to the department store in the marx brothers movie the big store which has like shelves with things like that on it so they, they both have shelves with things on they them. both have shelves with things <laughs> wow no i don't Imagine. know never seen a movie with shelves with things <laughs> well on those them. shelves were very old-fashioned in flaxseed <laughs> store okay and they they had very high shelves so that's the, the only thing like stylistically the shelves look similar <laughs> that's the only so go rent the movie folks go look at those shelves <laughs> Sounds great. That's what the most. That's what critics said in the in the original things. Like <laughs> Marx Brothers, pretty good, but those shelves. Oh, I tell you what. <laughs> so that is the big candy store. Is it any last thoughts about that? Or should we just move on to segment? There was the two. Good Feathers made an appearance. Oh yeah, the Good Feathers yeah. were in there at the very beginning as yeah. well. They make cameos. It's that's like yeah, kind of a, a they're good cameos. They're all good. Time. They're good window dressing cameos because they don't really have to even necessarily move. They just kind of boop. Pop them in there and keep moving, and they can put them on top of any building or yeah. anything. It's every scene. It's like yeah, it makes they don't sense. even yeah, they don't have to pay to animate them. They just have to pay to draw them once, and then mm-hmm. there they are. They're a cameo. Yeah. Just keep remember, kids. Those are also characters in our show. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's go ahead and move on to Bumby's mom then, which was written by. Sherry Stoner, and then directed by John McClanahan <laughs> and Barry Caldwell. So there we Those go. Those Irish voices. <laughs> uh, Kelly, what do you have to tell us about Bumby's mom? Well, Bumby's mom is one of my one of two of my all time favorite Skippy and Slappy Squirrel episodes. It's always been one of my favorites. And S- Slappy and Skippy are at the movie theater, and they're watching Bumby the Dearest Deer. And Skippy's really getting into it. He's moving his head with the music. He's really liking it, eating popcorn. And it's a parody of Bambi. So his mother goes out into the forest and she tells him to be careful. And then she gets shot. And he, his eyes well up with tears. And he starts crying really loudly and pitching a fit in the middle of a theater. And he just can't deal with it. He, he apparently didn't expect this going in and he's traumatized. <laughs> so, uh, Slappy decides to take him to meet the actress who played Bumby's mom to show him that she actually didn't get hurt or injured. She's alive and and well in New Mexico. And so they take a trip and it's, uh, speaking of cameos, it's it's an episode full of lots of different kinds of cameos. Oh, yeah. And, um, and it's just, it's just cute. I, I like it. it. It's, you know, referencing Disney films and 
talking about how kids react to movies yeah. sometimes a little little dramatically you have to kind of be prepared because you never quite know what to expect particularly if you take them to the movie theater oh yes I, we just took um my wife and i just took our niece uh, lois to the to the theater to go see the bfg and... i love that movie <laughs> well lois was very she's very <laughs> sensitive when it comes to certain things on in the movies like she's she's very worried if movies are going to be scary mm. uh there are even things of, of certain things of like the clone wars movie that she was like you know too much for her sometimes when it gets a little too intense but uh when the bfg reaches in to uh grab the room the, grab, yeah. yeah at the very beginning she's her head was buried in my arm going no 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 <laughs> and we had to tell her and then of course when the mean giants come out later in that she was really concerned that these mean giants were going to eat her or something and <laughs> yes 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 little girl we took you to a movie where a little girl gets eaten by a giant let's go all, right. all go home <laughs> now good night <laughs> we, we had to <laughs> we had to reassure her constantly that no the BFG, they're going to trick the Mean Giants, and don't worry, it'll all be happy at the end. Everything will be fine. Spoilers. It's, it's a Spielberg <laughs> movie. Of course everything is happy at the end. Yes, exactly. So, How Spielbergian. <laughs> How Spielbergian. So there's our Spielberg uh, reference for uh, today's episode. I ah, you thought you could get away with it. Yeah, we had to check it off the list. <laughs> Done. Um, Done. But yes, uh, yeah, it was a it was a good little quick parody of uh, the the traumatic moments in the original movie Bambi. Uh, so even the, going to the fire scene as well, just seeing. Oh yeah, uh, I really liked the animation, particularly in this episode of of Skippy, uh, especially in those scenes where he's crying, where the camera is, is really close to his face, and you can see the tears welling up in his eyes. Mm. Um, I like when he's happy too. Before, like when the movie started, like just. Yes. His laugh and everything. <laughs> there, you know, I will say this. There, there's no, you know, moderate, there's no moderation with Skippy's <laughs> behavior. <laughs> it's to the, it's to the extreme. Either way, on one side or the other, he might need some medication. I'm not quite sure. Mm. But <laughs> Skippy, uh, yes, it, again, very funny. In fact, I was, I was watching it and going, wow. His crying is really good. Like it was, it was over the top, and that's what made it funny. Uh, but I actually I had to go ahead and tweet uh, Nathan Ruger, who is the voice of Skippy. Uh, Nathan Ruger is the the son of uh, Tom Ruger, who is the uh, the creator of the Animaniacs, of course. And I asked him, "How did you do that? Basically, how did you make that? How did you, you know, make?" yourself cry so much as a little kid because he was only i'm thinking was eight or nine eight or nine yeah i want to say that so um i asked him he says well he said okay thanks he goes i imagined how it was let me look at this real quick this is what he said he said i imagined how hard it was for bumby what if that was my mom he says luckily i had my dad nearby so in some ways that just made me just go oh just a little bit more just imagining this little kid imagining his mom dying but uh hey good job nathan ruger it worked it, it was a nice performance <gasps> um nathan ruger by the way also the voice of young plucky duck we mentioned him a couple oh. episodes ago uh, so he started off at a very early age uh, doing Young Plucky, doing the water elevator. go down the hole yeah. and Ella later go down the hole. I and... love that. Yes. Water go down the hole. Yes, dear. Water go down the hole. <laughs> His voice is a little different now. Wow. <laughs> In fact, I heard him uh, just on a, one of the more uh, recent episodes of Talking Tunes, mm -hmm. and they did a Christmas special. Uh and Nathan Ruger is on that with Sherry Stoner, and they were both uh, doing the voices of Skippy and Slappy. Oh, okay. And Skip and Slappy asks him, uh, "What happened to your voice?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, listen to that uh, episode right there uh, of Talking to. It's very very cute to hear uh, what Nathan Ruger sounds like today, especially still doing uh, <laughs> Skippy Squirrel just in his normal adult voice. Uh, okay, so what are your uh, what are your thoughts of Bumby's mom? Nathan, let's start with you. 
What do you oh, think? well, um, it's a it's a classic. I remember this as a kid. Bumby's mom's. <laughs> Bumby's mother is. Ah! <laughs> um. Oh, so um, and I love all the uh, cartoon swipes and everything. Just how she keeps breaking the fourth wall again of just where did I put that thing and swipe, 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 swipe. Oh yeah. Break, cut to the next scene. Oh yeah. He's yeah. Actually car- but the plane sick, air sick. Yeah. Uh, yes. So just lots of little, uh, just, just pretty much everything Slappy says is just like a, a wink to the audience or whatever. We got to see Hello Nurse's second job in this. She's actually a stewardess on the mm-hmm. weekends, apparently. I guess so. <laughs> so she's, but the, of course they, you know, the it's, Mortar Brothers and Dot, they still chase her around. She can't mm-hmm. get away from them, no matter what job she goes to. Uh, let's see, Kelly, what do you, what are some other thoughts? Do you have anything else to say about uh this particular one before we should go into some trivia and some different uh cultural references of it i just think it's just a really cute fun episode and um and i, I don't think we haven't mentioned the roadrunner and um a coyote right. yet have we no we haven't yeah Another... they they pop up in there um me me <laughs> 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 kind of running around and uh getting on each other's nerves and uh and then there were several um re- there were references to George Jetson and Bam Bam and Magilla Gorilla as well I believe yeah. which is one yeah. that I never really watched as a kid but <laughs> Magilla Gorilla is not a woman he is a gorilla that uh wears uh, suspenders and uh just uh, just pants mm-hmm. so <laughs> Magilla Gorilla is not a girl uh yeah, the very, very quick references, not only to cartoons, there's Pebbles and Bam Bam, I think, right? And they talk about that. One thing I, I did like that about Slappy Squirrel is that it really did feel like, uh, you know, these were to- these were tunes who just got older and, you know, now they're doing their thing, except they're they're older and they don't have a job. They're just <laughs> retired yeah. and they're just doing their thing still. I just, you know, that really works for these. Um, let's go to some of the cultural references here as, and as we go through, we'll, you know, we'll mention other things that we like. Um, first of all, Bumby, the dearest deer, um, that song is actually Jess Harnell singing right there, the voice of Wacko. So he has some vocal, I mean, he's a, he's a rock star. He knows how to sing. So there's, <laughs> there's some of, uh, Jess Harnell singing and, um, Slappy, of course, she says so many different cultural references, like offhand, so quickly. Uh, at one point, she says, uh, "Pat, I'd like to buy a vowel," which is, uh, of course, a reference to the Wheel of Fortune. She called. She makes reference to Jean Shallot at one point. I don't know who that you is. You don't know who Jean? Oh, I do. You don't remember Jean Shallot, Nathan? I don't think so. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Do you remember? Did you ever watch the Today Show's uh, movie critic at all? Um, probably. Oh, Gene Shallot is he? He's a he's a funny. He was he was he's he's passed away about oh. five five years ago. I want to say. Um, what can you tell us about Gene Shallot, Kelly? Well, I know one time he interviewed John Williams. Now in ET. I'm told that Steven Spielberg recut the end of E.T. because he wanted to give you enough film to play that theme. Is that a true story? What really happened was the day we were recording the end reel of the film, the last 10 minutes of the film, I kept doing take after take, performance after performance with the orchestra, and I never could get all the cues within the 10 minutes exactly right. Steven said, look, we know the music fits. It's a 10-minute piece from here to there. Just play the music the way it feels to you, and then I'll re-edit the film if I need to to make these little things conform. And uh, if, I, if I recall correctly, it was a pretty extensive, um, really good interview, and he he had a very distinctive look. He had kind of this wild black hair and a real big bush, bushy black mustache, and uh, he just was a very distinctive movie critic, yes. but he, you could tell he seriously loved films and uh, really, really knew a lot about them. He, 
he was famous kind of in the same way Leonard Maltin was. And I think yes. Leonard Maltin was sort of like E.T. correspondent, right. uh, movie critic. And then Gene Shalit was for the Today Show. And it was back in a time where movie critics actually were kind of celebrities in their own right. Oh, yeah. I think that's yeah. kind of disappeared now because everybody's a critic. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, you go to Rotten then, Tomatoes. I remember him now. I looked up a picture too. So. Oh, good! You saw yeah. a picture, and I'm of like, him. "Oh yes, I actually really do know this guy." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I did enjoy him. Too. Yeah, once um, you've seen Gene Shalit, it's kind of hard to forget Gene Shalit because yeah. he had those. Everything was just wild. He looked like a a crazy person as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Just like he got your attention. They mentioned a couple a couple other things. They go to Tucumcari, New Mexico, which I just thought was a weird uh, place. Tucumcari, New Mexico, is real. Uh, and I even may have some listeners from there, so <laughs> no, <I'm... laughs> we do. Oh, <laughs> but if you do, and you have a Yakko doll. Take a picture. Oh yeah, Yakko. yeah. In Tucumcari, <laughs> there. You know what? Looking at the pictures from uh, Google Images, there's some cool stuff at Tucumcari. There's some weird, cool stuff. It looks like a just a little small town in New Mexico, uh, but with some cool uh, stuff. So yes, absolutely. Take some pictures of Tucumcari residents and send them to us. Hashtag <laughs> Yakko's World. Uh, there's a, yes, we mentioned a ton of Hanna-Barbera references. I think Hanna-Barbera at the time was actually bought by Warner Brothers. Uh, th they started incorporating a lot of Hanna-Barbera stuff into the Warner Brothers store, I remember. So that might have had something to do with all those references right there, with them being so free and easy with all those. I mean, they wouldn't. I couldn't see Slappy Squirrel ever mentioning... Mickey Mouse, like she wouldn't say that, yeah, uh, because Disney could be very sensitive when it comes to their uh, their material. But uh, Hanna Barbera, boy, she'll she'll throw out tons of those references, and of course, there's a psychology reference as well. Mm -hmm. uh, she she says Pavlov would love this kid when uh, when bump, when I'm sorry when Skippy is crying, and of course, this is a reference to the uh, psychologist. E Ivan Pavlov, who uh, basically he did a whole thing of classical conditioning with a dog. You mm -hmm. ring. This is everyone ring learns this when you go into psychology 101. You learn about Pavlov. <laughs> you you ring a bell. You give the dog a treat. You ring the bell. You give the dog a treat. Mm -hmm. And he would do it and then ring the bell and see how much the dog would drool waiting for the treat. And there you go. So in this case, Skippy was very classically conditioned to cry whenever you heard Bumby's mom exactly there you go <laughs> there's your psychology reference um so let's go ahead um what what do you guys think uh any other last thoughts about Bumby's mom um, parts you really liked the, it ends with uh old yellow at the very end yeah. oh old yellow <laughs> oh no and then all right, I get the joke. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen old old yeller. Yeah, I know um, what happens. I know what ha I I don't recommend it. My mother we rented it when we were kids, and my mom's like, "Oh, this movie's so sad." Well, why? No, no, you have to watch it. Okay. What did you just do to me? <laughs> yeah, I I was tortured as a kid, so you have to watch it too. It's like, wait a minute, wait, no, that's not how things should work in the yeah. world. Well, uh, it's like I I got the book where the red fern grows. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Oh, that book is so sad, but it's so good. Well, what happens? No, no, you have to read it. You Why have to do you cry. This to me? <laughs> yeah. So yes, pretty much you can guarantee that if a dog is involved in a movie at all, uh, it, it's probably going to die. Unless the movie, like, unless it's like a hotel for dogs or cats and dogs. Well, my best friend <laughs> yeah. told me. I think it was my best friend, but she's like, you have to see the movie Max with the German Shepherd. No, no, I'm not doing it. No, no. <laughs> And she knows me so well. She's like, no, the dog's fine. The the dog lives. You can watch it. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Uh, spoiler spoiler alert. alert. Sorry. <laughs> the, the movie's been so, out for a while. Especially give the spoiler alert before you give the spoiler. No, oh, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> and now it's time for the results of last week's Twitter poll question. Listeners were asked, which of these movies would make Skippy Squirrel cry the most? Hashtag Animaniacs. 22% said The Force Awakens. 34% said Molly and Me. 44% however said It Was the Beginning of Up. What an emotional result. Well, it's time to go to the hosts and hear 
what the Twitter poll is this week. All right, it is time for this week's Twitter poll, and we have a brand new question for you. So far, the Animaniacs have come up to several different, we'll call them antagonists, uh, in in these episodes, mm-hmm. uh, even though the Animaniacs themselves are kind of the an- antagonists in a lot of ways, yeah, it's just from a certain point of view <laughs> how you how you look at these things. Uh, but uh, we're going to ask you guys a question out there: Which of these following antagonists are your personal favorite? It could be just someone that you just thought had funny reactions or over the top reactions to whatever the Warner siblings were doing to them, or you just like their voice, or I don't know. I'm not going to be picky yeah. why you like them. I'm just going to ask you which one of these is your favorite. <laughs> and uh, the four we've picked were Captain Mel from the HMS Yakko, Thaddeus Plotz, the CEO of Warner Brothers, Timpanini, the great pianist. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and Furman Flaxseed, who was in charge of the candy shop the big the big candy, candy store, store. <laughs> so yes so go ahead and go to our twitter page twitter.com slash animaniacast to make your voice heard and uh, we'll see who wins next week oh boy so let's go ahead and go to water tower ratings of this particular episode episode eight of the animaniacast so uh who wants to go first what is your water tower rating for this episode I'll go. All right. I'm going to give it four. Four. Because, All right. Well, I love Bumby's mom. It's, mm-hmm. it's a really strong uh, segment, and and I really like the candy store. It's it's just a fun, uh, you know, interesting segment with the Warner Brothers being their most annoying and entertaining and uh and even the gilligan's island the uh, song it was kind of cute at the beginning so I, yeah. I thought all around it was a really good episode very strong um i just particularly like bumby's mom okay nathan what do you think i'll go with a four as well all i right. think the randy beeman segments help push it up just to help give it a little where it feels like there's more content to the episode you get those extra little jokes and everything Okay. So it feels more full, especially compared to like some uh, episodes just recently, you know? Yes. Yeah. It seems like everything's a repeat of something they've done before. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> you know, you're not talking about Newsreel of the Stars. Or- That's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, uh, I was almost going down to three and a half just because of the uh, here's the show's namey and the <laughs> goodbye nurse. But I thought that'd be rude. So we'll go for it. So. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be, I was going to give it three, but you guys gave it four. I'm, you talked me into giving it 3.5. <laughs> um, I I liked, I love Bumpy's Mom. I love that segment. It's always just one of those classic Skippy and Slappy, and perhaps it's really one of their best cartoons. Um, but I wasn't a huge fan of the candy store. Um and I don't know exactly why. I, I think it's because you had to watch the big store. And... Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Actually, the big store wasn't that bad. The The big store has some, some very funny moments in it. Those um, shelves. <laughs> those shelves are amazing. <laughs> um, but I give it, I give it three and a half. I, I think the thing that kind of bothers me about the, uh, the big candy store is just the animation of the Animaniacs. It mm. looks, I don't like it. They look rounder and, uh, I don't like their faces. Their faces just look off. And I, there's like, th- I think I should start uh, categor- categorizing like, uh, and I know there's th- at least two or three different animation studios that worked on animating the Animaniacs. Um, one of the, whoever did this particular one, I don't, I do not like the way they drew them. I just don't like it. So I'm going to give it three and a half. Not not a bad episode, but definitely not one of my favorites. Uh, but Bumby's Mom, I do love that segment. So there we go. Well, let's go ahead and wrap things up here. Uh, we have, uh, don't forget to go and vote on our Twitter, Twitter poll. Uh, and we also have a contest where you can win a bunch of different Animaniacs decals. A uh, bunch of cool ones of various shapes and sizes of uh, Yakko, Wacko, and Dot, and Pinky and the Brain, and put a brain in the White House. It's a whole, boy, oh boy, it's a 
it's a variety pack of uh Animaniacs decals. So oh, there fun. You go. I want it. <laughs> nope, you can't have it. Mm. And the way you do that, Nathan, how do they do that? How do they get to enter in that contest to well, win the decals? All you need to do is go on to the podcast, uh, whatever podcasting application you have, and leave a review on the Animaniacast. Uh, preferably give us five stars and tell us how amazing we are. But yeah. I do want to. I do want to preface one thing right there. What's that? We can't. They can't they, there's so many podcasting. You can leave. Please leave a positive oh, okay. review wherever you want. Them. That's true. I don't know if we would see it. <laughs> but any we others. wouldn't necessarily see it. <laughs> so That's in order true. to make sure that you are your review is seen so that you're in the running, mm-hmm. you have to go to what specific place? iTunes. There you go. There we go. Leave it there and then copy and paste it in on all the other <laughs> I, your podcasting apps. Yes. Yeah. That, that's if you're awesome. But anyway. No, you have to. Po- you have oh, really? To, yes. Okay. New rule, apparently. I, I, I mean, we won't enforce that rule. No, not but at all. It's, it's there. <laughs> the rule is there, just not enforced. Okay. There you go. Rules are in place, but not enforced. What a great rule. Uh, <laughs> so, yes, go to iTunes. Leave a, leave a nice positive review for us, and then you'll definitely be in the running for those decals and don't forget you can also do a yakko's world picture uh nathan uh took the yakko doll and uh showed it right there in front of the paul bunyan statue yeah the famous arizona (laughs) paul bunyan statue (laughs) there's multiple paul bunyan statues just like that throughout the country by the way yeah but this one's the arizona one yeah that's right people come all around the world to see this arizona no they don't no they don't not really uh but anyway so uh, send, take a picture of Yakko or just a printed picture of him or draw a picture of Yakko. I don't care. Put it in front of something and say, hashtag Yakko's world. Put it on Twitter or send it to our Facebook and then we'll put it up on Twitter for you. And uh, just a cool little community thing right there. And it's a nice collection of pictures. Well, let's go over contact information. <laughs> Kelly, where can people get in contact with you if they just want to say hi? They can find me on Twitter, Yoda Princess, Y O D A P R N C S S, or email me at Kelly, K E L L Y, at bigshinyrobot.com. And Nathan, what about you? I don't know how many times I have to specify this. <laughs> um, it is the <laughs> most simplest thing. I know. Uh, Sorry. I don't even think anyone would need to even think about it. It's just too obvious. Django FT on Twitter. That's me. Got there tons we... of followers. You can be one of them too. And I'm constantly saying things. <laughs> How many followers? Are... Oh. oh, I don't know. I've got tens of them. I don't know. Tens of them. So just <laughs> <laughs> there you go. And uh, you can get in contact with us uh, twitter.com slash animaniacast, facebook.com slash animaniacast, or you can email us at animaniacast at retrozap.com. We are a proud member of the Retrozap podcast network where you can listen to a bunch of other different cool podcasts as well so go to retrozap.com to check those out and join us for our next episode when we're going to be talking about wally llama and the, <gasps> <laughs> and, <I'm sorry. laughs> and the return of pinky and the brain Yee. so i think kelly might be having a, you know some fun with wally llama so i love wally llama <laughs> Tune in for that. So for Kelly and Nathan, this is Joey for the Animani cast. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. This podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds of the Animaniacs characters or any other Animaniacs related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Warner Brothers, Amblin Entertainment, or their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacs unless otherwise indicated. Okay, bye.